this recipe is old and authentic. You're gonna love it. I adapted this recipe from Kind Kadoks. I Americanized the measurements and the ingredients without altering the taste. It's still perfect, but just make it simple and easy for us here in America to make it. Stay tuned. Thank you for watching. I'm Claudia with eColor with Claudia. Preheat your oven to 425. We need a ceramic bowl. Find these work better than the metal. I'm going to start with self-rising flour. Right here, you can get this in the grocery store. It's so cool because it already has leavening agent in it. Three and a half cups. Next up is a fourth of a cup of sugar. We need fine granulated sugar, a quarter of a cup. Now drop in four ounces of margarine. I used, I can't believe it's butter. I got the kind in the tub. And you know, I learned when a recipe calls for margarine, don't substitute it with butter. There's a million and one reasons, but the main thing is the taste because butter's a little bit more rich. Um, and the other is I think that, that the margarine has a little bit higher water content. So go ahead, it's worth it to get the margarine to four ounces. Now with pans, we are just gonna crumble up this mixture. And we wanna do this probably and take mm, about two minutes and you want it to eventually, it'll have the consistency of fine breadcrumbs. Oh, but keep it light, keep it airy. Okay, I think this looks really nice. I'm gonna go wash my hands, we'll be right back. Now in a small little measuring cup, you want to crack one egg. Just lightly scramble it. And we want to add one and a half cups of milk and just going to give it another little stir. Now grab your favorite spoon, which this is actually my second favorite spoon because my favorite spoon is for my pasta sauce. <laughs> but anyway, so take your spoon and then you want to reach in and you want to make a well in the center of the bowl. And then you'll take your milk mixture and pour it in into the well. But be careful, don't pour it all in. Leave a little bit so that we can brush it on top of the scones before they go into the oven. Using the wooden spoon, there's a special way to mix this. You go from the outer edge of the bowl to the center of the bowl. Just like this, and all the while then you move the bowl with your other hand. And once you like, get this going, it's pretty easy to do it. But just keep on doing like this. Now, once it combines like this, you want to stop because you don't want to overmix your dough. Now, you sprinkle some flour on your surface and you want to tip the dough out of the bowl here onto the floured surface. Sprinkle a little flour on top. And get maybe a little bit on your hands because this next part here, you gotta like stay loose and flexible. Kind of bend your knees. You wanna reach in and pivot your dough to make a ball. Brush off a little bit of the flour that's on top. And you're gonna flip it over onto a floured surface. And I'm gonna pip it again. We wanna keep this nice and light and airy. Brush off a little of the dough on this side. And now as you pivot it, we're gonna pat it a little bit and just kind of keep patting it and keeping our circle. This is about a 10 inch round, three quarters of an inch thick. I think it's perfect. So next up, grab a baking tray. If yours is like everything sticks on here, then you can spray some nonstick spray on here, but you don't, you don't need to. Grab a round cookie cutter. I, I don't have a circle, but I have this glass cup and it works out perfect. And, and make a little, a little mound here of flour. Take cookie cutter and press it in into the flour, tap it, 
and press and make your make your biscuits. And just place them on your on your pan just like this. Keep doing this until you get them all on the baking tray. Keep them about an inch apart because the closer together, it helps more gets more of a rise out of the scones. And when you have these scrappings here, you can just go ahead and, and make more. This whole recipe makes about mm, 12 to 13 of them. So now we've got them all on there. We got a dozen. And you can take your leftover, the milk and the egg, and you're gonna just brush, you could just brush these liberally on there like this. Now, if you notice, we didn't put any raisins, currants, blueberries in the scones, because after they cook, then you can, you know, put whatever jam, butter in there that you want. These are just very, very simple scones. All right, I'm gonna get these in the oven for 12 to 15 minutes or until they start to turn a little golden brown. We're about ready to take the scones out of the oven, but I wanted to first share a little trick I learned to keep your scones or even your biscuits like super fresh. First, you take your tea towel and lay your tea towel down like this and then put your cooling rack on top and then flip your tea towel back on top of the cooling rack. Y'all, these are beautiful. Ah, let's get them off. These scones, you're absolutely gonna love these. Now lift up your, um, your tray, there you go. And now with your tea towel, cover them like this. And this way now they're gonna stay super fresh until you're until they're cooled down and you're ready to serve them. I am so ready to taste one of these. It's really soft on the inside. Love the crust and just a little bit of sweetness, but not too much. I mean, like this is a scone. This is outstanding. Y'all, thank you for watching and please subscribe and give me a thumbs up. And until next week, y'all, oh, happy St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> bon appetit. Mm.